Fat side, move your hand. Watch him now, watch him. Now. Right, remember, he's got two hands, right? Damn, man, what the hell are you doing? This guy will knock you on your ass. Come on, Rock, it's not a game. You want to live in the hospital for five weeks this time? You thought I was tough? This jump will kill you. All right. Come on, come on. Get your head on your shoulders, man. Think about the fight. Think about the fight. Clubber Lang's in here. He's trying to hurt you, Rock. He's trying to hurt you. Okay, here he comes. Jab. He's jabbing. He's jabbing. He's trying to hurt you. You gotta fight him. You gotta move. Another man that's taking the beating. He's up against the ball. There's an eye of honor. Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. All right. Double honest to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that's teaching this word in truth and sincerity that's risking your lives and your freedoms to do so, like the elder brother Malcolma says. And peace and blessings to the rest of the elect. The one third of the house of Israel that's scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. The brothers and sisters that look like the other races and nationalities, but they have the spirit of Israel. OK. Now, this is going to be a commentary on that video that we just watched of uh, Creed, Apollo Creed training with Rocky, trying to prepare him for his uh, second fight with Club Elaine. OK, which was played by Mr. T and it, it, it sparked my spirit, man, because, you know, we view things, we view life, we view everything through a scriptural eye. And when we see certain things in life or we live, we live through certain experiences, the scriptures always come to life it, or it comes to mind. And um, I pray and hope that, you know, I, I, I pray and hope through the spirit power y'all by some y'all side that he gives me the spirit to edify uh the lord's pasture okay because and i hope that they don't fucking take this video down because i'm using it because i'm not using it for monetary gain but for educational and edification purposes but this clip was heavy because you know apollo creed was training with rocky but he was so traumatized from his first ass kicking he wasn't his head wasn't in the game which equates to brothers in this walk in this straight walk you know and i'm referring to apollo creed as the most side because you know he's a jake you know and he's training rocky which is the hopeful elect is symbolic of the hopeful elect trying to gear them up for what's to come and that's what the Most High is doing to us constantly. He's constantly preparing us for what's to come. His elect. Okay? Because two-thirds of our people, they're not gearing themselves up. They're not preparing themselves spiritually for the troubles and the perilous times to come. So, this is a show to get your head in the game and this is a show to tell you there is no tomorrow. Like he, he, he ended, he ended the trade in the round. There is no tomorrow. Well, let's, let's just start off with that. Um, day to day. Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, in the Apocrypha, chapter 5, verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So that's why we got to constantly, 
yeah, this show, this scripture always comes out because this is a constant reminder not to put the Lord off day to day. And just like Rocky, you might be traumatized by your last spiritual ass kicking or you might be traumatized or distracted from the world weighing down on you. But you got to get your head in the game. Whether you late on bills, having a hard time paying your bills, whether you having a hard time finding time for rest or finding time to study, to pray, to read, you know, due to the world weighing down on you. Well, guess what? You got to fight, man. You got to make time. You got to find time. All right. I'm going to read it again. It says, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. Now, you got brothers, even me, myself, I speak from, I speak, I put myself first before I talk about uh, brothers in general, because it's not towards anybody specific. But, you know, you got your set days that you do shows. You know, you got your set days where you actually have some wiggle space to get the work in, get some studying in, you know? But remember, prior to well, when you first wake, woke up, you always found time. <laughs> your, your spirit was so hot, you made time, right? You put off the things of the world, you isolated yourself, and you made time. Now, yes, you're a little bit older, you have a lot more responsibilities right now but guess what you got to have that same spirit or that same zeal to make time okay and don't put off for tomorrow find some time you have 24 hours in a day you can find 10 minutes to listen to the audio bible to read a chapter or two you have some time to just pray you have some time to focus on the Lord. It says, for suddenly the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security that shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So guess what? The Lord cometh as a thief in the night. You got to constantly be watching. Constantly, man. So the next scripture, this is Job chapter 38, verse 3. It's oh, watch as well as pray lest ye fall into temptation. Because if you're not watching and you're not praying and your head is not in the game because, oh, how am I going to pay these bills? And uh, my woman's not happy. Uh, my kids is this. My parents is that. My home is this. The Lord is going to come when you try to fix your problems. And he's going to he going to get you like a thief of the night. And that's not going to be pleasant. It's not going to be pleasant at all. You got to have faith that the Lord is going to get you through whatever obstacles that you're going through. All right. So it says, Job chapter 38, verse three, gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand it of thee and answer thou me. So just like with uh, Apollo Creed and Rocky, Apollo Creed was hammering away at him, man. Just like life. Is going to be hammering away at us. But your head got to be in the game. Or you're going to get knocked down. And you're going to get knocked out. If your head is not in the game. All right. It says, gird up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand it of thee. And this is the main, one of, another example. All right. Our ancestor Job. He was going through all types of hell. Hell that you couldn't even deal with, man. Woman rose up against him. I know some brothers are going through that. It's funny. Some brothers are going through a little bit of everything Job went through. But Job was going through all of that shit at one time, man. Some brothers lost their kid. Job lost his kids. Some brothers are dealing with infirmities. Job dealt with infirmities on top of losing his kids. 
Some brothers lost their women. Job lost his woman and had infirmities and lost his kids. Job went through all that shit in one. All right. And the Most High told him to gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand it of thee. And that's what Apollo Creed was doing to Rocky. All right. Like, get your head in the game, man. He will tear you up, which is spiritually Satan. All right. Spiritual demon Satan will tear you up if your head is not in the game. What you think you're going through now compares to nothing what we're about to go through. And for he to have an ear, let him hear what you're going through now is preparing you for what you're about to go through. Next scripture. Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in ya Mashiach Yahusha. Mashiach is the Hebrew way of saying Christ or anointed. And Yahusha is the true in Hebrew, the, the true name of the Messiah who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So it says, Thou for my son, be strong in the grace. So you're supposed to be strong in the mercy and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because though you're going through utter hell, spiritual hell, all right, you're being tormented by demons and the demons that hop on people. You're being plagued in your mind. And all things under the sun is coming up against you. But guess what? What's the difference between you and the rest of the world? You know the truth. You know that Yahweh Bashem Yahushua dwells uh, with you and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven is revealed onto you. So being that you understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, you know how to combat Satan. You know how to combat demons. Read it on. And the things that has heard of me, it says, and the things that thou has heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So bring forth fruit with meat for repentance. This world is only for the ones that the Lord put the spirit onto to inquire. This word is only given to the, the house of Israel first and foremost, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians and Mexicans. But even within that house is the elect. The VIP, the remnant, the elect, the chosen ones. Verse 3, thou therefore endure, endure hardness as good soldiers of Yahweh Shai. Now, when you look up this word, endure hardness, it's strong G2553, Kakopathio, and it says to suffer. Endure evils, which means hardship or troubles, to be afflicted. And that's what Club Elaine, I mean, Apollo Creed, was trying to teach Rocky. You got to make yourself hard against evils. You got to make yourself hard, which means endure, you know, against whatever you're going through. Whether it's your woman rising up against you, you losing your job, or you having a hard time with your bills, you always broke. You got to endure and pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah daily to strengthen you and to get through what you're going through. Uh, read it on. No man that warreth. And tingle, and tingle lift himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So you're not supposed to be entangled with the things of the world because the things of the world is going to distract you. Now, does that mean that you don't have hobbies or that does that mean that you don't got things that you like to do? Every brother got hobbies. Everything. Every brother got things that they like to do, whether it's drinking Listening to music, watching movies, making music, making poetry, 
singing hymns or to the most high. Whatever is your downtime. But that's not your priority. When you at war, you're not thinking about sex. When you at war, when you're in a fight, you're not thinking about busting a nut. When you're in a fight, you're not worried about some baking cookies or making pasta. Your mind is geared towards the fight. All right. It says, and if any, if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Lawfully, the husbandmen that laboreth must first be partakers of of the fruits. The husbandman that laboreth must first partake of the fruits. Okay. And pretty much that's it. I'm going to play it one more time. I pray and hope that they don't take this down. If they do, I'll just do it again and just commentate. Inside, baby. Side to side. Move your head. Watch him now. Watch him. Right. Remember, he's got two hands, right? Move your head. Gotta love those classic movies, man. Gotta love them classic movies, man. But that's that's the spiritual demon Satan. It's constantly kicking our fucking, <laughs> constantly trying to chew us up. I'm not. I'm talking about Club Lay. Club Lay is the adversities that we're about to face, the challenges that we face. And and Apollo Creed was like the most how Yahweh just getting on us. That's what Yahweh was doing to the twelve, and that's what Yahweh was doing to Israel. Constantly giving, like chastising us. All right, preparing us, man. Um, one more scripture because he said there is no tomorrow. Something else came to mind. What's that? One second. This is Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whether, whether thou goest. So whatever you do, you do it with your might, man. Because there is no tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised for none of us. So you do what you have to do today. You do what you have to do today. Hit brothers up. Check on us. Check on the flock. Check on the brotherhood. Make amends with brothers. You know? Love your neighbor as yourself. You do want to brothers that you want done unto yourself. You know, do these shows, get busy, man. All hands on deck. There is no tomorrow because you can't do the work in the grave. You can't love your neighbor as yourself in the grave. You go back to the spiritual world and you do, you do what's, uh, what's recorded in the scriptures. Pray for the saints. And whatever else they do in the spiritual world. But the time is now. The time is today. 
Not tomorrow, not two weeks later, not three weeks later. Like uh, Apollo Creed told him, there is no tomorrow, man. You know, we all go through shit. We all traumatize. We all deal with some type of mental illness or spiritual demons that we fight on a daily basis. But we got to fight through it, man. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. All right. Pretty much that's it. I pray and hope that you was edified. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah. Until next time, I say Shalom.